Hi there! Today we are going to have a look at one of Shopware's most important features, the Import-Export module. What do we use it for? With the aid of the Import-Export module, we can import data into our store as well as get it back out in bulk. That's the export part. We can make use of this with lots of different data, for example customer data, orders or products. So we can, to mention a practical example, export all products from our live shop and import them in a second shop. For example, a staging environment for development purposes. This way, we don't have to recreate our products from scratch and can instead export and comfortably import them again in our stage. Because the export is created in widespread CSV or XML format, we can also edit it easily. This has the added advantage that we're not limited to transporting data from shop to shop. Instead, we can work on the export data with a spreadsheet editor like LibreOffice or OpenOffice and efficiently make changes in bulk before importing the data again. Oftentimes, doing it this way is much more efficient than doing it for everything individually in the admin panel. Let's start with where the module can be found. It's hidden in Settings, Shop and Import-Export. The first tab of this menu lets us import data. In order to do this, we are going to need a CSV or XML file containing the relevant data. The other important bit is that we pick a profile here which explains to Shopware what the data is and how to handle it. For all the commonly im or exported data, Shopware already comes with a default profile. For example, let's assume that we want to import a product. This product doesn't exist in the shop yet. We want to create it. The required data for importing with the standard profiles can be reviewed in our documentation located at docs.shopware.com. This is where we're headed. The extensive documentation contains examples for practically every standard profile. We can find the example for product import with the standard profile here. Let's download the CSV file and have a look at it. We can see that in this example there's a single product. Before we can import this into our shop, we need to pay attention to a few details. The first field, ID, is the unique UUID of the product. Based on that, the data is matched. If we were to put an ID here of a product which is already present in our shop, an import would match the data to that existing product and thus update and override data for it. We'd like to create a new product with this import though, so we can leave the ID blank. If the ID is blank, the data is not matched with an existing product. Instead, a new ID is assigned and consequently a new product is created. This is what we are going for. The other detail in this example file which we should be paying attention to is that every product needs a tax rate. The tax rate's ID, which can be found here, varies from shop to shop though, as it's dynamically created. This dataset uses a 7% tax rate. The ID here corresponds with the tax rate's ID in the shop from which this was exported. Let's see if our 7% rates ID is the same. For this, we'll memorize the last four letters and digits. 46C4. In our shop, we'll go to Settings, Tax, and hover over the tax rate. We can already see in the URL preview in the bottom left that this does not match. Our 7% tax rate has an ID ending on D47B. This isn't a big problem though. We'll simply change the tax ID so that the tax rate, which already exists in our shop, is used instead. To achieve this, we'll open the tax rate and copy the UUID from the URL. Finally, we'll simply paste the ID into our field at tax ID, like so. The remaining data looks good, no changes required. Let's save. Back in our admin, let's have a go at this. First, we'll select the file here. I'll pick the previously downloaded and edited example file. Afterwards, we have to tell Shopware which profile should be used to have context for the data. In our case, this is default product. For products, we also get the option down here to determine whether or not we want to import variants as well or limit the import to main products. If we're ready to go, we can use the button down here, Start Import. Right next to it, we have the button Start Dry Run. The Dry Run feature basically runs the entire import but doesn't actually change or create anything in our store. It's intended to be a simulation of the import. 
This can be quite useful if we aim to import large amounts of data and would first like to see if the import actually works the way we'd like it to, or if we have, for example, errors in our file, which might lead to a partial import and a giant mess. Since we only have a single data set and it looked rather well, we can start the import immediately without a dry run. The current import's progress, including other imports we may have started in the past 30 days, is visible down here. Ours was successful. Let's see if our new product can be found in Catalogs Products. That looks good. SW test can now be found here at the top of our product overview. And if we open it, we see it also uses our 7% tax rate. Great success! Next up, we'll look at the import's counterpart, the export. Again, we can find it in Settings, Shop, and Import Export. Only here, we use the second tab, Export. Here too, we first have to pick a profile which determines what data we want to export from our shop. Let's stick with Products and select Default Product here. As was the case with the import, we again have the option to determine whether or not we want to export variants or limit ourselves to main products. Afterwards, we click on Start Export and only have to remain patient. This menu also offers an overview of all export activity in the past 30 days. We can also download those finished exports with the three-dot menu on the side. There we go. Opening the export file afterwards, we see that every product in our shop has been exported. We got their names, their stock values, their active states, descriptions, and so forth. What's different from before is that we also have the product's IDs this time. If we were to edit something and consequently import the file into our shop again, the data is matched based on those IDs. This would result in none of the products here being created anew, as we already have those IDs for products in our shop. Instead, the already existing products would be updated with the changes we made here. If we were to delete an ID here and import again afterwards, Shopware would not have a product matching that ID and would opt to create a new product again. And that about covers it for the export. Last but not least, we have a tab labeled Profiles. This is where we can check what data is contained in the default profiles for IM as well as exports. If we wanted to, we could also create an entirely new profile with a button here. Alternatively, we can also take an already existing profile as a base and copy that. For this, we'll click on the three-dot menu here and select Duplicate. We'll create a new profile though. Initially, our profile requires a name. We'll go with Test. In the next step, we have to select an object type. The object type determines the context for the data as well as which database tables are accessed. With usage, we can determine whether our profile should be limited to imports, exports, or be allowed for both. Below that, there's field indicators. These set up which characters are used as a separator for the individual fields as well as the enclosing characters. In the majority of use cases, you can simply leave these at the default values as most spreadsheet editors for editing CSV and XML files agree that it should be exactly those characters. At the bottom, we find two more important settings. These allow us to set whether we want the profile to be able to create new datasets in case of an import and whether we want it to be able to update already existing data. We'll recall the IDs we covered previously. We're happy with these settings and click on Next. This next step opens up the possibility to import a CSV file containing the mappings for the database fields, for example, from another shop. Shopware would then give us a structure for our mappings based on these. We'll skip that part for simplicity's sake. Shopware already added all the required database mappings for the object type we selected. Without these, it simply wouldn't be possible to create a product. As a result, all of these are marked as required. The CSV name on the very left can be freely picked. This is simply what the column will be called and is intended for us to easily identify what is what later. Next to it, there's database entry. Contrary to the name, this must have an equivalent in the respective database table in order to import or export anything. And here we have the default value. The default value is used in case the import contains no data for that field. If we were to enter a 10 here, 
or stock and later on ran an import with this profile containing a product which had no data for it, the import would instead use the default value of 10. And finally, on the very right, we can change positions. The position determines the order of the mappings. We could use the arrow buttons here to, for example, set it so that the ID is listed below the prices. I don't like any of that though and thus will restore the initial order. Let's add something new. We'll assume that we would like to have the active state in our profile. Personally, I always look for the database entry first. Usually I can simply type what I'm looking for and it will usually find something that fits the bill. Hence, let's search for active. That looks promising, we'll take it. The CSV name doesn't matter as we recall. Let's just call it active state. Required? No. Let's leave it disabled so we have an example for a practical use of the default value. Let's activate that one and set a zero here. The result is that, in case of an import with this profile, if we were to import a new product not containing data for our active state, Shopware would default to a zero. Meaning the product we just imported won't be active and available in the store right away allowing us to fine-tune it in the admin, for example, and then set it to active by hand afterwards. Our profile looks promising. With a click down here on Add Profile, we are done. Our shiny new profile is now available here in the overview. Let's give it a spin. We'll go to Import Export, go to the Export tab, and select our profile. Now we'll start the export, and patiently wait for the result. That was successful. Let's download the file. And here we can see the result, including the active state we just assigned. Everything looks good. And with this, we were able to get a general overview of how the import-export module works. All in all, we can do a lot of things with it. For detailed information, what you can do with each object type, I'd recommend having a look at our documentation. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this video.